Thank you. Next will be uh, Brian, Brian Mann, and after that will be Nancy Ross. Thank you, Brian. Did you have a hand out of the public? No, I did not. Okay. It looks like this works. <laughs> My name is Brian Mann. I'm a retired pediatrician. I live in Dollar Center, Kansas, and a uh, lifelong Kansas resident. If nobody else tells us a scheme body tonight, I thank you for your service. The past two years, 19 states across the country, including Kansas, passed voter registration laws that make it harder to vote. As I'm sure most of you are aware of these voter suppression laws, including the Kansas version known as the SAFE Act, target low-income Americans, ethnic minorities, the elderly, and new voters. The SAFE Act has been dubbed by one TV pundit as the gold standard in making it almost impossible to register to vote. So what is the problem with the new SAFE Act Fair Election, or with the Safe and Fair Elections Act? Well, there are literally so many new voter registration restrictions, it would take hours to discuss them all. So I'm going to limit my comments to one aspect of the new law that would make it more expensive and difficult for some Kansans to vote. The voter registration restrictions now require new Kansas voters to jump through numerous bureaucratic hoops, provide supportive documents, fill out forms, and wait for as long as one year for the request to be processed in order to obtain a newly required proof of citizenship. For those born outside the state, some of these supportive documents can be quite expensive. The replacement birth certificate can cost $40 or more. The passport costs $135. For naturalized citizens, replacement uh, citizenship documents can cost a minimum of $220. In Wichita, Kansas, that's real money, folks. $220 is two months of utilities for a two-bedroom apartment or food for a family of four for two weeks. That's assuming you eat a lot of pork and beans and macaroni. To real people, that's real money. If the expense doesn't disenfranchise the voter, then time waiting for the documents certainly as well. So what is the rationale for a Kansas law that makes it harder for Kansans to vote? A very good question. Many political observers feel the Kansas Safe Act, like other voter registration suppression laws, was born and bred out of pure partisan politics. The theory claims that those in power in the red states craft legislation to limit or suppress votes from the traditionally democratic demographics of low-income voters, the young, the old, as well as people of color. So in this setting, politicians get to choose who votes, rather than voters choosing the politicians. So obvious is the discrimination of these laws that the Brennan Center for Justice at New York City University called them the first rollback in voting rights since the Jim Crow era. A second theory that has been dubbed the Chicken Little Syndrome um, is also out there. If you remember the children's story, of Chicken Little gets hit, gets hit on the head by an acorn. Chicken Little believes that the sky is falling. Chicken Little runs and tells all her colleagues and friends that the sky is falling. They all believe her. And then what do they do? They all run off to the fox and tell the same story. He beats them all because of their stupidity. Substitute Chris Kobach for Chicken Little. And the acorn on the head has the false belief that voter fraud is rampant in America. Voter fraud is not rampant in America. In fact, there are no well-documented academic studies to support that voter fraud even exists. Yeah. Fact, yeah. This law is nothing more than a partisan gamesmanship and watered-down Jim Crow laws. I have confidence the legislature will recognize this error, amend this mistake, and repeal the voter registration restrictions. I thank you for your time. I'm taking this year off to give time to some of can the action of can vote, as I hope that will answer my thesis. And I am speaking on can on a portion of uh, a can vote on a portion of the Secure and Fair Elections Act. The 2011 Secure and Fair Elections Act requires the Kansas Department of Vital Statistics to provide a birth certificate without cost to Kansans born in the state. Though these have been advertised as free of charge, this is a specious argument. It actually costs the citizens of Kansas hard-earned dollars. <coughs> this law actually creates additional bureaucratic red tape for local elections offices, additional bureaucracy, creates additional costs for taxpayers. At a time when we in Kansas are concerned about stabilizing and growing our economy, at a time when we are cutting department budgets and reorganizing the overall tax structure, it is quite unacceptable that we have created this additional bureaucracy. Instead of streamlining the voting process, this law actually complicates the administration of voter registration. In Cedric County alone, during the November 2012 general election, 
532 Kansans were turned away at the polls for lack of voter ID. With the implementation in 2013 of having to prove citizenship to register to vote, many more Kansans will plausibly not even try to register due to the fact that the process is now too complicated, prohibitive, and intimidating. I recently renewed my driver's license. To do so, I was required to produce my previous license, my birth certificate, and a proof of residence. I wondered why anyone would need to produce a birth certificate again when registering to vote. Why must both the Kansas Department of Revenue and the Kansas Secretary of State's office need to see the exact same document? How many additional employees are hired to do the exact same job? What is the additional cost to the taxpayers? I have not heard a single word about how this law affects the bottom line in our budget. In essence, we, the people, the citizens of Kansas, have been told only part of the story. We were not told of the added cost to implement and enforce the law, nor were we presented facts as they pertain to actual voter fraud. The equation of alleged voter fraud to any prosecutable crime does not balance. In a study released in July 2011 by the Brennan Center for Justice at New York School of Law, a well-respected and independent nonpartisan institute, I rebuttal to Secretary of State Chris Kovacs' claim that voter fraud is well documented was shown to be without merit. The report states, quote, Kovac relies upon data about reported events and allegations of problems with no reference to actual prosecutions. Allegations are not facts. That is not statistically significant data. The this voter restriction law was legislated in part due to arguments containing allegations without proof. As such, the voter registration restrictions in the SAFE Act must be repealed in this 2013 legislative session. Uh, my name is Billy Knight, and I don't have a handout for you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the dedication and service that you all represent. And uh, I know you face many, many, many questions and difficulties and problems that you're being asked to solve. Um, in the recent legislative sessions, uh, one which you were asked to uh, solve, and uh, was uh, the, the SAVE Act, uh, was represented by the SAVE Act. And I'm sure um, at first glance, this must have seemed to most of the legislators as a good answer to make sure that our elections were really safe and fair. And but as we have worked on implementing this, we can see that there are many, 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 many more difficulties with this legislation than could have been anticipated. As, we, as and we've come up against particular instances of, of the way people can be so disenfranchised who have, you know, every right uh, to, to be voters. Um, I mean, something as simple as if someone has moved to the state of Kansas and uh, recently enough and that they haven't become aware of all the requirements for now, of course, a proof of citizenship, for instance, and, and, and the voter ID, uh, the, the, the picture ID, and, and so forth and so on, um, could go in to register to vote and within the 21 days before election. And uh, lo and behold, oh me, I need this document, I need this document, I did And maybe they were born out of the state and they, they can't get their birth certificate or whatever. This is going to happen over and over and over again in many, many cases of injustice. Uh, we could go on for a long time, but bless your hearts, you've, <laughs> you're, you're listening to so many people and hearing so many that I, I, I just wanted to say, please, please work at repealing the SAFE Act. It is not safe for citizens. I want to thank all the legislators for coming here and uh, assembling in one place for uh, the public to get together and uh, voice their concerns and uh, ideas uh, to all of you at the same time. And I appreciate you all serving the public and for your time. The uh, the SAFE Act, the Voter, right, uh, the Voter ID Act uh, that was passed, known as the SAFE Act here in the state of Kansas, the last session, 
Uh, also known to many of my friends and colleagues as the Voter Disenfranchisement Act is a blight on the state. The very nature of uh, the substance of, of the law, although it sounds great, SAFE Act is a misnomer. It does nothing to eliminate uh, in-person intentional voter fraud. The fact of the matter is that in-person voter fraud, intentional voter fraud, is non-existent. It does not exist. In reality, there's no in-person intentional voter fraud. Every, all the statistics that you hear, the incidents of prosecuted voter fraud are 13 across the country, nationwide. So the uh, illustrious Secretary of State that spends his time running around uh, that making our state look bad has uh, created this law and tricked people into voting for it. Uh, it's done nothing to protect uh, the, uh, the uh, sacred uh, voting rights that we have. The, the, the very notion that this law in some way protects uh, the general public from voter fraud is ludicrous. This is a boondoggle of taxpayer money being spent for no reason at all. And I would like to encourage all of our legislators to consider when it comes up a repeal of the restrictions on the voter registration. Thank you for your time.